hopefully we'll find that one. Okay, now, think about which side of the T you're going to tee off as well. You see, you went on the left side there, and you know, you're actually, in actual fact, you're hitting into the trouble. So what you want to try to do is always tee up on the side of the hole where you're trying to hit away from the trouble. Especially with a dog leg right like this, you want to sort of hit to the corner of the dog leg. You're giving yourself much more room by standing on this side of the tee. Okay, so let's go ahead. Now, remember, go through your routine. Try to keep your swing thoughts simple. I think one of the big things that you can think about, one of the best things is trying to complete your swing. Make sure you complete your backswing and swing to your finish. I know you've got your other keys sort of a little more technical, but a lot of times the simpler you keep them, the better. All right, so okay. go ahead. Let's go through that nice routine that we've worked on before. You know, get behind it, line it up. Take your time. There's no hurry here. Okay, and try to visualize your shot. Very important behind the ball to visualize the shot. Yeah, that's good. Exhale, breathe, relax. You know, a lot of people even whistle just to get nice and relaxed and loose. Right, now that was a lot better, wasn't it? Much better. We can find that one. Right, you see, you've got to get it into the cut piece, all right? You've got to hit it where the mowers go, as they say. <laughs> you know, the woods are full of long hitters. You don't have to take a driver out on, the, on any particular hole, especially on a shortish par four like this. All right, so okay. you learned something there? Yeah, I learned a lot there. All right, well, let's go and see what we can do. The key to consistent scoring, Bill, is really keeping the high numbers off your scorecard. Well, I know that when I've been playing, I've been making a lot of pars and a few birdies, but I have that occasional blow up and make an eight or a nine or something. Well, that's right. And uh, so you, you've got to really keep the ball in play. You know, you can hit a poor shot and uh, suffer the consequences. And I think, you know, you really must make sure that you keep good tempo. Like, for instance, that first shot you had was very short and quick, and that's understandable on the first tee. So keep one's tempo constant as... Uh, no question is uh, very is very important. You know, it's like the joke with the fellow went for a lesson to the golf pro and uh, hit a shot there. He said, well, what did that swing look like? So he said, well, if you slowed it down to a blur, I could tell you. <laughs> <laughs> well, you know, you teach a lot of the, the touring pros and great players. What do they do when they have a, a, a terrible hole, a double bogey or triple bogey? How do they recover from that? Well, I think the key really is that you've got to play one shot at a time. You know, you, you don't want to think back to the last hole. That's the first thing. You know, that hole's gone, finished, forgotten about, or should be. If you carry it on to the next hole, it can hurt the whole game. That's why it's so important to get a good start. You know, you want to, like this hole here, for instance, you know, get your par, hit it in the middle of the fairway, somehow sort of get it on the green maybe, and then two putt for a par. But you don't want to make a high score in the first hole because that tends to set the trend for your whole round. So, say, the, the good players, they have that ability to somehow recover, and more than anything else, you know, they don't get too excited or too depressed, no matter how they're playing. If you look at a lot of the great players, you couldn't tell what's happening to them you know, by their facial expression. So it's very important to try to stay calm, cool, and collected. And uh, if you can do that, you can think your way around a golf course. And that's the key. If we can learn to think our way around a golf course, my goodness, you can save a lot of shots. So let's have a look at this shot here, shall we? OK. Very fortunate here, Bill, to finish in this little opening. So what are you going to do here? Well, I think I can get it right through that little opening in the trees there. Well, who do you think you are, Sevi Ballesteros? No, I think I'm Nick Faldo. Well, I'll tell you what, Nick Faldo would certainly play safe here and sort of make sure he's going to get it out onto the fairway. Here, you could be in here for a week and nobody would find you. So come on, let's see if we can uh, play a little safety first here, all right? And just uh, let's pitch it out there. So you want to keep it under these limbs here. So maybe like a little eight iron or something, a little pitch shot. OK, let's Here try it. Go. Yeah, it'll fit. <laughs> well, I just caught the limb, but that's perfectly situated right in the middle of the fairway. And you can see, all right, you've hit it here. You might have hit a miraculous shot there, but you, know, you could make an eight or a nine in here. So at least from there, you've still got a chance of making par. Well, we're already making progress on getting rid of those big numbers. All right, we're making you think now. Well, here we have these balls lying fairly parallel to one another. This is the one that you've pitched out here, Bill. This is your three wood, so let's play this one first, shall we? OK. All right, so what are you going to do here? We've got uh, 145 yards of the pin from this particular point. So uh, what are you going to do? 
Well, I can hit a seven iron that far, and uh, with the pin near the bunker and the trouble left, I think I'm gonna try to hit it towards the center right side of the green. All right, well, that's smart thinking. Go ahead and do your thing. Okay. Well, not a bad shot, Bill. I think you mishit it slightly. You've, uh, you've come up short of the green there. And uh, fortunately, because you were aiming for the right half of the green, you've left yourself a, a chip, which is, uh, well, possible anyway to still make your par. But you know, many, many amateurs have the same problem as you just showed us right there. They never hit enough club. You never see amateurs pass the pin, really. You know, most of the trouble on any green is normally short of it. So I would like you to get into the habit of taking one extra club, just as a matter of fact. You know, if you think it's a seven iron, take a six iron, okay. and, you know, six iron, five iron, and so on, because it allows you to swing smoothly. It allows for missed hits. I know it's strange to say that, but you need to do that at times, because if you're just always allowing for your best shot, you're very often going to come up short. Okay. And uh, say, this is a pretty big green. It's important to know your yardages. So what I want you to do now is on this next ball, the one that you pitched out, virtually the same distance. So why don't you just take an extra club here now, okay? okay. Take a six iron. All right. I think we all at times tend to overestimate, you know, how well we hit it. Right. At times, sure, you'll hit it beyond the pin, but uh, let's get it there, shall we? Okay. All right. Now that's going to get back there. That's good. Don't let your ego get in the way of your club selection, Bill. Very important to get the ball back there. If the fella next to you is hitting a shot and he's hitting an eight iron, sure, you want to maybe look at what he's hitting, but make sure you judge for yourself. Club selection is so important. You'll find you'll get many more shots closer to the pin if you make it a habit of taking one extra club. Right, let's go and hit that second shot there that you just hit and see if we can make our pass still, shall we? Okay, sounds good. Bill, now you can see if you'd actually flown the shot straight at the pin, what you might have been confronted with. You can see over here, if you'd left it short, for instance, you can see you could have buried up the lip of the trap there. Uh, you know, you've got a very difficult little pitch shot here to a, an elevated pin. So certainly, you know, it was a, a smart play, sort of hitting it to the right of the green over there. So uh, let's go and play that shot over there, shall we, and see if we can make our par. Okay. All right. Got quite a long chip shot here, but perfect side of the green to miss it, and that's <laughs> the thing. All okay. right. So what are you going to do right here? Well, probably going to take something that'll roll it. In fact, we worked on this and we were working on the short game, maybe a seven iron and try to get it to just go over the crest of the hill and... Sounds good. I'll leave it to you. Not bad there, Bill. Not bad. A little short, but... Huh? Makeable. Sure. All right. Come on, let's go and knock it in. Okay. Okay, Bill. So, a uh, little putt left for your par. See what you can do about it. All right. Looks like just outside the left edge. Okay, that should be good. Fairly level. Well done. You left yourself a nasty one that? there, but that was a great part. Now you can see, just using a three wood, 
And even though you missed the green, it was a fairly easy par, fairly comfortable par. You might not think so, but I thought so. So uh, you can see how you can really save some shots. This is how you're going to get your handicap down. Right, now come on, let's see what you're going to do with this one here, shall we? Okay. The one that you uh, pitched out of the trees. Now you can see you still have a chance for your par. So that's the great thing. I say you might have had a miracle shot, but uh, this was the percentage shot. Still have a chance to make par. Exactly. About the same break, just a little longer. Oops, just a little short. Okay. Uh, 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 uh. You take your time, there's no gimmies in this game. I want you to get into the habit of knocking all those little ones in. You know, it's a ploy that we have in match play. You sort of get those little ones and all of a sudden you make a fella putt it and my goodness, they're not used to it. This is how people develop the yips, sort of being very casual and going up and knocking them in. So you take your time and okay. imagine every putt's for something. Okay, you practice this on the putting green, so it should be not, shouldn't be a problem at all. A little more All right. insurance there. Exactly. Well, you made a bogey, so no big deal. I mean, you made a one over par here. You don't get a stroke on this hole, being handicapped 10, but uh, a bogey is not the end of the world. So you made a par with the, the sensible three wood off the tee, and I think you're learning a little bit about strategy. So come on, let's go on to the next hole, shall All we? All right, sounds good. The second hole is a 175 yard par 3 over water with a very big green about 45 yards in length. Now covering the whole front side of the green is a big gaping bunker. To carry the bunker is 140 yards. Cut into the left side of the green is a grass bunker and to carry that is 150 yards. The pin is directly behind the grass bunker and 25 yards from the front of the green. So it really is a beautiful hole. So what do you think here, Bill? Well, it's an awfully big lake to the right there, and water kind of makes me nervous, so I'm going to try not to hit it in there. Cut. That's the first thing you want to forget about. You really want to try to keep a positive image in your mind. You know, if you think in terms of don't go in the water, your brain automatically thinks and sees a picture of the ball going in the water. I know it's easy to say that, and water is very intimidating to most golfers. But, you know, to a certain extent, you've just got to trust your golf swing. Forget the water, get your yardage, hit your shot, and carry on with it. You know, it's so important to stand here and visualize a good shot. So if you visualize all the negatives that can happen, you're in trouble. Okay, so now the big thing, Bill, on any hole, on any shot in particular, is to assess the situation correctly. So looking at this hole, you've got 140 yards to carry the bunker, 150 to carry the grass bunker, and the pin is 25 yards back. So you've got a pretty big green, and uh, yeah, it's really a good looking hole, so hit a good shot and you're fine. Okay, well, looks like I should probably hit either a three or a four iron, and from what we talked about before, I should probably hit the three to make sure I have enough club and get it there. Now you're learning, Bill. <laughs> I, should I tee the ball up or play it on the ground? Well, I always have a theory that whenever you can get a good lie, take it. You know, if you could just tee the ball up slightly, give yourself a perfect lie, rather than just put it down on the, on the turf itself. Because, you know, it's very easy maybe just to slightly mishit it. And on this hole, you certainly don't want to do that. So right. give yourself a perfect lie every time. You find most of the tour players will tee it up to a large extent. So uh, I, would, I always suggest, yeah, tee the ball up. Okay, I'll do that. All right. So you've got a nice big green here, so uh, you just go ahead and do your thing. Go through my routine. Absolutely.
Well, that was a solidly struck shot there, Bill. Felt good. 